So hello, my name is Paul. I will be doing, this is the first video in my series of explaining my VAR experiences. So today it, it didn't start off very good. The cook wasn't being very too nice. He made enough portions for 150 people and there was only 8 of us left. But for some reason he only wanted to give us our individual rations instead of give us the remaining 142. So the cook was about to throw out the remaining 142 portions. But me and my friends thankfully convinced him to keep those portions and give them to us because we are very hungry, we are working very hard in this war. So our friend Kemrek, uh, he lost his leg a couple of days ago. He didn't realize it yet, but when we all saw him, he lost his leg. We were all like, oh dude, that's messed up. So uh, we don't think he's going to live. He's messed up. It's, it's all disgusting, but we were still trying to make him feel better. He, he was acting all depressed and he was just very sad. Uh, he even gave Mula his new boots and that, that, was just, that showed how he just lost all hope to survive. And it's just, it's horrible to see a friend go like that. It's really messed up. Um, at the very end, I tried to find the doctor. He started, uh, I don't know how you Americans said, gagging and groaning, yeah. And so I tried to find the doctor, but when I came back, he wasn't breathing anymore. He died. It was very unfortunate. Today was actually one of the first amusing days in a long time. Since there was no fighting going on, we stayed at our site and started talking. We were telling each other what we were going to do once the war ended. And so the older soldiers told about how they were going to return to their families and their jobs, while the younger ones, such as me, uh, we said we were going to get drunk and womanized. So it shows the little differences that the older ones have something to go back to and we really don't. So as we were talking, Himmelstas shows up out of nowhere and we greet him and by just ignoring him and he gets very upset because we're not talking to him. He even starts yelling at Chaden because Chaden won't listen to him. And so at some point Chaden gets so mad at Himmelstas that he actually drops his fence and moons Himmelstas. And it was we were all sort of laughing and then he just runs away and it was it was amusing because it was the first good thing in a very, very long time. We all needed some something funny to hold on to and that was our good memory. Unfortunately, Hayden, Ch sorry, Shaden received uh, three days of open arrest, but it was still worth it. We, we gave him food after because we just, we gave him food that we found before, but it was just such a great experience. Hey, spring break, World War One. what's up? Oh. So, uh, anyway, after Himmelstas went to the front, he witnessed all the horrors. Hey, mom, quiet down, please. I'm talking. Come on, go somewhere else, please. Anyway, he witnessed all the horrors and he wanted to make amends with us because he had seen how terrible all the conditions were and what we had gone through. So we all became friends and it was, it was okay. I mean, Chadon at the beginning did not want to become friends with him, but we all decided to just make amends and it all worked out well. So anyway, after that little moment, we were all, with me and Chadon, sorry, me and Chadon were all swimming across the border and at night we snuck in to see these French ladies and we spent some time with these French ladies and they kept calling us poor boys because we were all getting killed off in the front. So after that, I received a six week leave to go back home. Mom, please quiet down, okay? Anyway, after that, uh, I'm sorry. So, uh, after seeing the French ladies, I got my leave and then I returned to tell one of the ladies that I had my six week leave and they didn't care. And at that moment, I realized that they were only interested in our fighting. They weren't interested in our personal lives. And so I'm on my leave right now. No spring break and I have just seen my mother who I, we all think she is dying of cancer. Who are you talking to? Go back to bed, nothing. Come on, okay. So anyway, uh, I heard through the grapevine, however, that Cantorek was drafted into military service. So I might visit that. I, oh my God, mom, can you please take that somewhere else? I have heard that uh, Kantorek is drafted, so I want to go see them because I want to give him peace of my mind about this fall.
So um, I was walking around town and I realized that I could not connect with anyone here anymore. The war has destroyed me for who I am. So to try to cheer myself up, I visited Kantorek and I saw him make do excessive punishments and do a lot of chores and work. And so that was at least fun to watch because we really hated him. He had influenced us in joining the war, so we blame him for all the horrors that was happening to us. So anyway, after that, uh, I went to visit a Russian prison camp full of Russian prisoners. And so when I saw them, I realized that we're not so different and I didn't feel any true hatred towards them. And the only reason we had to fight was because these two leaders told us to. So, something um, not that chill happened last night. When I got back to the front, I found that all my friends were okay, and that was good, but then we started fighting and it got really bad. The bombing and the shooting forced me to jump into a ditch. When I looked up, I saw a French soldier who had just jumped in as well, and before I could think, my body just took my knife and just stabbed him right right there on the spot. And so after that, I just spent the next couple of hours, he was still alive, he was just dying very slowly, so I spent the next couple of hours just talking to him, like trying to for forgive myself and just trying to apologize, because I just felt so bad about it. And, and then I saw that he, on his wallet, he had a family and that made me feel even worse. And so I've just been thinking about it. I've been thinking about stabbing him just, it was the first person I had stabbed in this war. I had shot people, but it's the first time I actually killed someone in hand-to-hand -hand combat. And so it was just awful. I've been spending the last couple of hours thinking about it. I talked to Kadzinski, and he said, he told me not to worry myself about it, but again, I can't. I'm just too shocked about what I have done. But I mean, on a happier note, I guess this isn't even happy, but, but before the fighting, before the fighting uh, happened though, the Kaiser visited to give us a visit and pump us up, you guys could say. Uh, we imagine him to be a large figure with a large voice and just a great guy, but we we're all very disappointed that he was a small guy. And you know, just to think that a person like that is ordering us to kill our European brothers is just awful. The week started off okay. We were instructed to guard a supply dump. With food and resources, everything was fine until the enemy spotted us from our smoke we were creating to make food and so they started bombing us. When we escaped, Krupp got shot in the leg and he ended up having his leg amputated. And it's just, I mean, this, this goes to show how quickly the war can shift. At one moment, it was all good, we were all safe. And the next, we were just all being bombed. And from that, everything just went downhill. That's when went crazy, and he tried to escape. He cracked, he tried to escape, and then the German army found him, and they killed, ex executed him. Uh, Krop loses his leg, as I have said, just said. Mueller is shot, and it takes 30 minutes for him to die. Lear bleeds out to death. And the worst comes with Kadzinski. He was he came back from trying to find food, and then when we when I found him, I tried to drag him to a nearby station, and I thought he was okay. But when I found him, he 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 was hit in the head by a bombshell, and so he he died. So I witnessed the only friend I had left died, and I didn't even get to I didn't even get to say goodbye. I just I thought he was okay, and then when I looked up, he was dead, and I just was too shocked. Uh, at this point, I'm just so hopeless. We're, now that the US has joined the war, because it's just too powerful and too awesome of a country, Germany will surely fall. France also did an awesome job. They're such a great country. Uh, Britain is okay, I guess. Uh, anyway, now uh, I have no friends left. I'm all alone. We all know Germany will fall. 
and so it's only a matter of time until we all die or we give up. Uh, I'm so hopeless that I can fight the enemy now without any fear. I just ha I have nothing left in the world. My mother will die of cancer. My family is basically miserable. And yeah. Hey, look, a butterfly. <laughs>